Hello everyone, it's Dragona from Sasebo. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to be making some journal covers today with uh, those three masterboards uh, that are part of my uh, collection called Forest Whispers. And I'm going to be using uh, those three masterboards or collages and I'm going to be using one of, some of the background papers from the same kit those for this project I will need some cardstock and I'm going to be using just you know cereal boxes just some recycled packaging all right that's it I need my ruler uh, knife and uh, some glue so let's start as you can see two of those uh, landscape version and this one is vertical or portrait so I'm gonna make two journals that are approximately a five size like that and with this one I am going to cut it that way and make it like this also a5 but a landscape version so I'll start by cutting up masterboards uh, I have to cut them all in half I'm gonna use those pictures on the covers but I will cover the spine with some fabric decide which one to put on the front that one or that one decide that later Now that I cut up those fronts, I have to cut um, the actual cardstock. This is just some cereal boxes that I have here, and I think they would make a perfect cover. Although I would have to add, double it up actually, I would have to double it up. Uh, these are slightly bigger than what I need. Because I want these journals to be A5, which is approximately 14 and a half by 21. Small, I just realized because we cut off the those sides so it should be a little bit smaller than that because we don't want any of the empty space showing so just there the fact that it's actually less here it doesn't matter because I want to put some fabric there and I also want to put some uh, lace 
think that would look really nice. So this is going to be the size of our journal. All right. So it is eight inches by. I'm not good with inches, but it's five and a five and three quarters. Five point seven of it. Of 14 and a half centimeters and 20 cent 23 millimeters or 20.3 centimeters okay and the spine is four and a half centimeters or one and three quarters of an inch so this is quite flimsy so I need to back it with some uh, heavier cardstock. Alright, I cut up some extra pieces of um, cardstock that I had that I want to glue on top of that and also one for the spine just to make everything a bit more um, you know strong. So I'll just glue these on. I'm using just acetone based glue um, you know, it's one of those with a really strong smell that don't uh, uh, wrinkle the paper. And it's really fast drying and it grabs really well. And, uh, but it has a really strong smell. Uh, I put a good amount and then I just use a piece of card just to Spread it around and then I would place this there, just press. As you can see this bit is a bit bigger but I'll cut that off later on. I'm just gluing now. Alright, let's do the other side. is going to be basis for our cover now it's nice thickness by the time we put paper on the inside and this it's going to be good so if I want this here and I want that there I found this uh, piece of old tablecloth that I tea stained and I want it to show this edge on this side and here perhaps I want it underneath. Like that. Right and then on top Later on, I want to place this so that it goes over here, but shows that below there. And I would probably glue that on at the end after I sew in all the signatures. But for now, I think I want to have this this way so what I want to do first is glue that bit up so I won't go all the way or should I probably something like that I 
I don't know if you've noticed, but I don't actually let the paper hang over the sides. Uh, the way I'm doing this journal is a little bit different uh, because I want to sew all the edges around at the end. So no overlapping and no going over the edges. So you'll see the end result. It just... I like that look. important to spread this glue really well because the fabric that I'm using is quite thin and I don't want the glue to leak through it. I'll just push in a little bit with this. I do have some glue coming through, but that's okay because later on we will put this on and it's going to be fine. Alright, I think that looks nice for now. Let's glue this side. I think it looks really nice and once we have this lace, lovely cotton lace it's gonna, going to look even better before I do anything else to this cover I have to protect this area here and this area here this was printed uh, using inkjet printer which means that ink might actually uh, leak if you get some droplets of water on it it will you know stain and the color might le uh, leak so I need to protect it and for that I use water-based uh, gloss varnish uh, it's just one of those you know that you use when you work with uh, napkins or serviettes uh, as a finishing touch and it dries really fast easy to wash the brushes afterwards and I usually put two coats so I'll just get some lids and I put a little bit here see it looks like milk it's really uh, watery and I just use a soft brush and I'll just gently go over the page do not put too much at once it might wrinkle the paper or smudge the colors and we don't want that so I could have done this part before I actually glued it but what would happen is that paper might shrink and then it would be harder to Um, glue it onto the cover. So I, I go once in one direction and once it's dry I repeat the process but I go across in different directions. You see, paper started lifting up a little bit here. That's fine, we can always fix it up. It's really hot weather here, so it already starts drying. And there you go. So let's do the other side as well. Now, here, it would have been better if I did it before I glued the fabric on, but that's all right. I'll just be careful not to go too much over the fabric. If I just catch a little bit of these ends, that's fine. It will just help them stay glued. That 
that's the first layer of varnish. I'll put this aside to dry for about half an hour or so and then I'll add another coat. While that journal cover is drying I want to uh, construct another one. I'm going to use what's left of that paper and I want to use uh, part of this, uh, the one that was vertical. So I don't know, should I use the bottom, the top one or the bottom one? Well, this one looks nice. I think I'm going to use the one with the an owl. Alright. So for that, I don't have a cereal box that is wide enough. You see that part is missing. So I'm going to cut this one out to use this part and I'll just move this here and I'll use some of this uh, tape to put it all together. I'm going to save these uh, to reinforce the spine. I'll just pu push through here a little bit and on this side as well. I put fabric on both sides it's going to be strong enough so now we still have to reinforce our spine I must say it's not so easy doing this and talking. It's actually quite difficult for me because a lot of the times everything's happening in, inside of my head and I might forget to actually say it out loud what I'm thinking and what I want to do next. And I quite often change my mind about things so I would do something halfway through and then I decide I want to do it differently but because I'm filming now I have to stick <laughs> to the original idea so that I don't confuse everyone but I'll you know do my best to actually make sense of what I'm doing right, I might just use this one I'll cut it in half Uh, this cardstock is thicker than that one I will just add an extra piece there so that it's even 
so as you see there's no need to actually go and buy cardstock there's so much packaging around like we're bombarded with it every way you know this is a great way to use it I hope this is strong enough these are also great to use they are like if you go to a hospital and you have a cut, they use these to hold your bandages together. They're quite tough. This is a paper one. And this is a fabric one. I think this would be the best to use. It is quite strong. Even if, it, if I just put it on one side. Yep. Before I put this, I glue this, cut off the excess, I use the varnish and then I'll glue that on top. All right. I never actually made that one that is this kind of format. It's going to look cute. Okay, so let's check the other one. This is touch dry, so it's ready for me to put another coat of varnish This needs to dry. Probably I'd leave it until the following date to continue the work. We have these leftovers. That's from that one. That's from the other one. And we still haven't done anything with this uh, master board. I think I would like to use this section here for the front. And that one again for the back. Again I'm using uh, the same as earlier uh, recycled packaging which is, this was cereal box and to make it a bit stronger I'll use uh, also another piece of recycled packaging and glue everything together. The same process as I did with the other two. I will do that off the camera and then I'll show you the end result. Okay, I completed this one as well. So basically similar to that one, but I decided the, the fabric part I'll do after I uh, protect it with varnish. It's just better because I realize here um, some of the varnish actually went over the fabric and it doesn't look good, but that's all right because I am going to cover it with the lace later on when it's dry. And um, so that one's been uh, protected with varnish like in two layers. And this one I think is ready for the second coat. And I have to do this one twice. Now this one needs another coat of varnish after this one dries, so in about an hour. Um, until then, I can prepare the paper that I'm going to use for the inside of the covers and the fabric that strips that will go over here. So I will do that while this is drying. Just trying to see which one would go nice. On the inside. I 
think I like this one for that. This one. I think I might go with the dark one. And for this one here. I think that one would look really nice. cutting part so I need to cut this in half again and slightly uh, this height but slightly narrower perhaps up to here like half a centimeter smaller than this area so this is 14 and a half I'll cut it to 14 because the fabric will go over it and once it folds I don't want it to uh, buckle up I don't know how to explain I don't sometimes if you have it all the way there and then the fabric it just it's really difficult for the journal to hold its shape so I will come in for about half a centimeter a fabric that will go here mm. I will need to because there is um, those flowers in that design they go upwards so I'll need two pieces of paper with the same print if I want to use the same one on both front on both sides Let's just this color matches that color the, the lighter color the pattern so I think I'm gonna use that one I have found a piece of this silky fabric. This is an old silk shirt that was tea, not tea dyed actually, it was dyed with avocado pits and uh, it used to be white, now it's kind of dusty beigey pink and I think it looks perfect for that one. What I could do now is uh, add other elements that need to go on before I put this paper all right I'm thinking for this one I might put this nameplate thing here I think that would be too much but uh, this size all right and I shouldn't put it too close to the edge because it's going to be difficult once I start stitching so I'm going to Put it right there. I'll just put a little mark. I'm just using this. Uh, tool to make a hole and um, I'm using those little split pins to actually secure this so I don't glue it I take one of these put through this hole and through that hole press it down with this finger and you use this tool to split open and then push down and outward that way it's really pressed and then you can even press it a little bit more into the cardstock so that you don't have a bulge there when you put that okay so that one is done once this is dry, you can slide in a piece of um, paper inside, you know, and you can write your name or you can write diary, journal, you know, notes, or, or even if it's like an art journal, give it a title, why not? Okay, so let's do the same for the other one. I thought rather than putting this one, I think it might look really nice with the bigger one in the center, like so. I don't know why, but it just 
I like how that looks. It reminds me of some of those old photo albums. So um, I will just roughly measure to make sure it's sitting in the middle. Again, make some holes. the way and then towards one side and towards the other side yeah. I think that's gonna look really cute okay and this one Again, I think it would look good to have one of those here. Now that the name plates are done, I want to glue the fabric to the front. This is touch dry so I can work on it. I'm not going to use the sewing machine quite yet but I can finish off those bits. Okay, so again glue needs to be spread really well so that it doesn't seep through the fabric. two laces together and because it's a thin fabric I can't really use regular glue with it it's not gonna look good it will probably seep through and so I just put some glue stick placed it there to secure it and I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and just uh, sew along this line so that it stays like that and I'll probably do the same on this side I'll just stitch probably close to here and also uh, or even here so that this part will be uh, left loose all right I need to do that over at my sewing machine I'll do it later but uh, while my hot glue gun is ready I want to glue this down I usually start from one end and I do like a zigzag dots just a few at a time. Okay, that is done. I'll just cut out this. going to be the front and that is going to be the back. I decided for this cover to add a bit of lace and uh, just this one I think would look good here and here and also I wanted to put some of that one I need 
to actually do it on my sewing machine. That's the only way it's going to be really secured. This is what the end result looks like. So I went through three layers of fabric and through the cover. Well, this one I decided to actually uh, place this way and I would leave it open for now and after I sew in all the signatures I want to do something here maybe like do like a little ribbon or something I think it would look nice just you know catching up those holes here and uh, I think that would look really cute that's that one No, this one also looks really cute. Uh, see, I didn't do anything there. It can be lifted. So only stitch through the cover here. I did one in the, through the center, it just zigzag, and another one here. So, fold it. Looks perfect. Okay. And of course there's this one the stretchy fabric didn't do anything else here I think it's enough as it is apart from that so that's that one now what's left to do is do the inner cover and stitch around it All I need to do now is ink around the edges on both sides and then put it through the sewing machine using zigzag stitch. I'll use a wide one which is at least three to four millimeters wide, something like that, and just go all the way around. All right, that one's done. Now we have this one. I think it looks good. Just hold its shape. This one. All right, all three are done on the inside and on the outside. Now I'll take it to my sewing machine, quickly stitch all the way around, and I'll show you what they look like. These are all done now completed on the inside and the outside the varnish has dried overnight really well 
and um, I stitched all around using zigzag stitch okay that's that one this one turned out really nice this one Then glued, dried. After I sew in all the signatures, I will put some ribbon through here just to make it look interesting. I think that would look really nice on it. And this one, that's what it looks on the inside. Also stitched all the way around, ready to be filled with goodies. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, we've created together three journal covers with background papers and masterboards from my digital kit called Forest Whispers. In one of my next videos, I'll be using the same digital kit, Forest Whispers, to create signatures for one of these journals. And until then, I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.